Hello everyone, welcome to the first tutorial and today we shall be creating the model of an overhead hoist in the simulation software Abacus. This is divided into several parts and we shall be going one at a time. Eventually at the end we will be performing some analysis such as finding the deformation system and stresses as well as the dynamic response to the load. So without further ado, let's begin. So to create the part, we go to File, New Model Database, Standard Explicit Model. Double click on Parts, let's name it Frame, 2D Planar, Deformable, Wire, Approximate Size of 4. Let's begin off by creating a rectangle. Here you can see that there are four con perpendicular constraints at the corners which need to be deleted. So you click delete, scope, constraint and select all four. This is to ensure so now we can create a truss. Next we add a constraint parallel between the top and the bottom members. Next we add the dimensions. The bottom member will be 2 meters the upper member will be 1 meter left slanting member will be 1 meter and the right slanting member will also be 1 meter now we need to add more lines to create a truss so we go to create lines select the top left corner go to any point on the bottom and go to the other vertex Next, we need to split the bottom part and the internal slanting members. So we go left click on auto frame, select split, select the bottom and the left member. And you can see that these are now split. Now we need to add another constraint, equal length between this member and this member select done now you can see that this one this one are equal length is two meters and everything is fine so now we move on to the next stage whereby we shall be adding a new material so for the new material we go to materials sorry okay so okay so this one is done so we go to material Okay, so next we need to add materials, so double click on the materials, let's label it steel, Me guess what, mechanical, elasticity, elastic, Young's modulus, it is 200 GPA, so let's type it in Pascal's 200.0E9, and Poisson's ratio, will it will be 0 0.3. Just remember to use consistent SI units. Uh, for this one, we're using SI units, but just be consistent with your units because Abacus does not have any built in units. So then click OK. Now a material is set. So in the next section, in the next part, in the next part, we have to define and assign section properties. So to create the section, define section properties, double click on sections. Let's name it frames frame section and go to beam truss continue. Here the material is steel and cross sectional area. Because the cross sectional area we have to use you have to use the cross sectional area and the diameter was five, so we'll be using pi d square by four. So pi into D pi d square by sorry pi d square by four. Okay. So now we have assign. So now we have defined the section, but now we need to assign the section. So now we have to assign the section. So we go to parts frame and then section assignments so to create section okay let us select all of it let's label create set all and done now the frame section 
Let's select OK and the sections have been assigned to this truss. Next, we need to define our assembly. So define our assembly. Let's go. Let's go to assembly and double click on ins instances. Go to the parts, frame, independent, just select OK. And the instance has been created for the assembly. So in the next part, we need to create a step. So that is the part of configuring mm, for the analysis or creating an analysis step. So what do we have to do? OK, let's just bring it down. So now we have to double click on steps uh, instead of step one. So the step will be adding a load and then we select initial procedure type will be linear perturbation will be linear perturbation and select continue since we'll be adding a load of 10 kilonewtons let us add the description Newton central load and okay so for this analysis let us just examine the output requests uh, that are available in ODB file to, s to see the what output requests are there right click on field on um, field output requests and manager and here you can see that this one has been created go to edit so you can see which all things are selected which things will be output just select okay so let us just cancel it and then here dismiss it okay next you can also view the history output requests so go to manager again and again go to edit and you can see which stuff had been requested and then just cancel it and dismiss it so we have seen the field output requests and the history output requests so the next part we will be applying the boundary conditions and loads to the model condition we double click on VCs and let's name it fixed and the step will be low it will be mechanical and we will be selecting displacement rotation and continue so in the next part let us just label it fixed okay wait now sorry let us just label it left and we will be selecting the left vertex and then done you can see the distribution unicorn will be u1 u2 and ur3 so since displacement uh, in two direction u1 is the x direction and u2 is in the y direction we select both u1 and u2 and select ok now you can see that there is a constraint at the left corner let us uh, just centralize the view and then this is for the left corner now to add a condition again to right corner double click same way double click it let's name it roller low mechanical same way and continue and here let us select create set right we'll select the right vertex and then done and now you can see that there are now we have to select only two as it is constrained in the y direction only due to it being a roller support and then here you can see that it is just roller support with f which is fixed in the y direction so let us now centralize it all right so in the next step we need to add a load so to add a load we go to the loads right click manager and create so we will be naming it force the step is in the load and then we go to mechanical and then concentrated force and continue and next we select Next, we select the point 
the point name it center and then done and then we had cf1 and cf2 cf1 x direction cf2 is in y direction and since it is uh, 10 kN in downward direction so we'll type 10 kN which is 10 thousand newton and since it is facing in the downward direction we will it will be minus and then we'll click ok and then dismiss so now you can observe you can observe that there is a 10 kN force acting exactly at the central bottom node so in the next stage we need to mesh our model so to mesh our model we have to go to the top so you go to the model go to parts go to frame and double click on the mesh then we go to the top mesh element type element type select from the sets we select all and continue and here the element library will be standard geometric order is linear and we will be selecting the truss family the truss and select ok and then we are done here so in the next part we go to seed and then click on part and then we measured approximate size to be 1 and then click OK and then we go to the mesh and select part OK to mesh the part and yes and our mesh has thus been created next we need to create a job to perform this analysis so we'll go down to the jobs double click on the jobs and let's name the jobs so the first one let's name the job frame and then continue and then in the description let us just type two dimen two dimensional overhead hoist frame we click OK and the job has also been created next we need to check the model firstly we will run a data check analysis to run it. so we go to the jobs container right click on the frame and data check job files already exist for this uh, ok just click ok the error had appeared because I had used it previously so the job input file has been submitted for analysis the check is running the you can s and then the check is completed so it mentions here that the job frame is completed successfully so if you wanted to monitor the job status so we can just go to frame and then in the monitor you can see what errors would have appeared what errors and what warnings up there the uh, what are the output where and then so if so we can see that the analysis had started and it was already completed and this is it so just to monitor what status the job was in so next stage we will be running the analysis so we will go to the frame and then click on continue ok job files already exist for the frame just click ok to override it and the job input file has been submitted for analysis and the job frame successfully completed so now it's time to view our results so to check the results we go to job on the jobs go to frame right click and click on results and here you can see and this okay so some information is given here and you can see the undeformed shape of the truss structure over here 
okay so now if you want to display the node and nodal number so we will go to options common and then labels and you can show element number node label supply okay As you can see the element and node numbers okay so okay if you want to just see first we just select the node number so this is the first node second node third node fourth node fifth node and for elements element is the first element is the second element is a third element fourth element and so on so okay let me just ignore these apply okay now if you there's some information over here if you want to ignore this information we go to viewport and then from here we go to viewport annotation options and we just set all off and apply so then this one becomes clear or you can set all on and apply so you have all this information here for now just ignore it so that you set it all off apply so that you have a clearer visual picture so in the next part we will be displaying the deformed shape so we go and click on floor deformed shape so this is the deformed shape so this is the deformed shape. This is the original shape. Oh, sorry. Oh, so this is the original shape. This is the deformed shape. This is expected because we applied a central load of 10 kN over here. So to view this one more clearly or if you want to change the deformation fact, I mean the scale factor so you can see the changes more or less in detail we can always go to options and then common and here in the auto scale is here so if you want to just try out a different one uniform let us go let us type a value of 10 and apply you can see the deformation scale has reduced so let us for this one let us just go back to auto compute apply so the the image is more prominent and ok so now to superimpose the undeformed model shape onto the deformed model shape, we'll let us click on allow multiple plot states. So we click on allow multiple plot states and next we go to plot undeformed shape. So you can see the white one indicates the undeformed shape and the green one indicates the deformed shape. So now if you want to change the shape or type or color so what we can go to options superimpose and color and style so then here we can select any style it can be a dotted style or solid style so we go to the dotted style and we can also change the thickness and let's just stay with the base thickness and style and then just select ok so you can see that this dotted part is the undeformed shape and the green color is the deformed shape go back to the single plots and from here we go to view and then ODB display options ODB display option entity display click on show boundary conditions click OK so you can see that the boundary conditions or rather the supports at both the corners can be seen next we we'll want to generate a tabular data reports or, or data field data reports so to generate that you go to the main menu go to the main menu and go to the report so, so we go to the report and then click on field output can okay now if you want to generate report we go to report field output and then we go to setup and then type frame and then integration point selected and this is the stress components we select s11 and then apply and then 
select OK. Okay, so now in the field output, okay. So now if you want to add some other information, we go to the variable and on uh, we go to the variable and under spatial displacement. Okay, we select position to be Okay, so let us just go back to the report field output and in the output variables in the position we select unique nodal and under unique nodal we can we will just toggle off the stress components you want and you to so go we go to the stress sorry not here so not here so we go to the spatial uh, we go to the spatial displacement and select u1 and u2 and the stress components will toggle off so it will be just u1 and u2 select apply So the nodal displacements are mm, so the nodal displacements are appended to the report file, and okay. So in the next part, we would like to generate field data reports. So, so to do so, we go to report field output and then select this integration point uh, select integration point and then we go to the stress components and select S11 and we go to the setup page and we label it frame.rpt frame.rpt and toggle all and toggle all the column totals yep and then click apply in the next section we will again go to the variable and go to unique nodal and toggle off the stress components and select u1 and u2 from the spatial variables from spatial variables select u1 and u2 and then we will just apply it you can see the fill output report it was amended to the frame.rpt file reaction force RF1 and RF2 and toggle of spatial displacement and then apply. And then apply. Okay, the reaction forces are now appended to the report file and the report field output dialog box can now be closed. Next, we can just uh, examine the frame report file. So we open we open it, and we can see this one here. So in this uh, data file, you can get all the information as required, and then we can see the minimum and maximum values at which node, and that's that for this. So in the next and final stage, if you'd like to plot the contour plot or the von Mises plot, what you would have to do is okay. So for so you'd need to 
modify the change we had already made earlier so go to um, viewport annotation options and then we will click on show legend show triad show compass and apply and ok so next we will go so next we will go to this one select S S11 and this is how you get the stress plot and then if you'd like to get the deformation plot go to U it will be U2 U2 is in the Y direction this is the deformation plot and these two are and this is how you get these two plots so in the next part what we'll be doing is we will be running an assay using the abacus explicit and uh, dynamic response so so to do so we go to model one right click copy model and let's name it as explicit and okay and then we open up explicit and go to steps we expand the steps right click on load and replace and then new procedure type will be we select general and go to dynamic explicit continue and description we shall write 10 kilonewton central load suddenly applied and set the time period of steps to be 0 0.01 this is in seconds since there are no units we're just using the standard SI units and we click on OK next we can modify the output requests so next we will be adding displacements to the history output request so to do so we will right click on the history output requests manager go to edit and then this section under domain we will be choosing set and we will be choosing center because the load is applied at the center and dynamic response would be at the center for every n increments and the value of n is equal to 1 and we will toggle off energy and we will add displacement velocity acceleration ut translations click ok and dismiss now we will be adding density to the material so we go to the material go okay right mm -hmm. we go to the material and go to edit we'll go on the general and density on the density we will add a value of 7800 this is in kg per meter cube and click ok and the density is added so next we will be required to change the element library so the next part is for us to change the element library so to do so we go to frame and double click on mesh and then we go to mesh element type select all and continue and we'll change the element library to explicit and everything will remain the same and we click ok dismiss this one is done so in the model 3 we will go to jobs we will go to jobs double click on the jobs and then we will name it exp frame exp frame S choose the explicit model and continue I'll just select it ok for now that are in description and the exp frame first we will uh, select us and we will submit the task uh, just ignore this because I had a previous file so we will have submitted a task and we will be looking at it ok there has been submitted for analysis and and it is completed successfully package is complete successfully okay, so the job is now completed 
since the job is now completed we go to XP frame and click on results you can see that you cannot see much of the information so we have to we have to increase the scale factor so we go to options common auto com we go to uniform a value of 20 and apply sorry nope okay so next uh, since we are at the results now we will be looking at now since job is done now since the job is done we will look at the results so this is the undeformed shape so what we will we will be looking at the deformed shape uh, the deformed shape if it is not visible to some of you then go just go to common and change the value to 20 then apply okay if you, if you change the va if you reduce the value the deformation will be less i mean it will just appear to be less and if you increase the value you can observe it more perceptively now if you want to see okay so now if you want to look at the animation go to animation time history and you can see how it is moving up and down you can also go to options and you can change some settings and you can just say change the mode to play once apply ok and now you can just play so it will rotate only once I mean it will just deform once ok so for the last step if you just want to create a xy plot of the vertical displacement at this node uh, what we will be doing will be going to exp frame.odb under output database then double click on u2 u2 is in the y direction so you can see how it the displacement varies with time you can jo we can also change the axis labels and the time here is a uh, st standard unit seconds and displacement is in meters So if you just want to change the label, so you just double click here and you can change tick marks, you can change what style you want, or change the title, axis, scale and thing. So that is it for the first tutorial. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial and video.